Okay, here I'm working on my Honda Accord 2008, the J35 engine. Doing the timing belt this afternoon, and uh, you know the car has 130,000 miles on it. And um, I even kind of debated the necessity of doing a timing belt because the car has been so trouble free. But from what I'm seeing here from the parts I'm taking off, I highly recommend you do it uh, at the 100,000 mile mark like they recommend or like I've heard they recommend. Uh, a lot of talk on the internet about tools you might need to get the job done. And I'm not going to kid you, the tensioner bolt or the dampener bolt, which is here, is super tight. And knowing that ahead of time, doing a little bit of internet homework, I was able to borrow this three quarter inch drive ratchet, a couple extensions, because you do need to go out, get out past the wheel well. And then I picked up this here three quarter to half inch adapter at, I want to say AutoZone, and the socket, which is an AutoCraft impact socket, 19 millimeter six point. I did have some 19 millimeter I don't know what you call them, uh, chrome, vanadium, kind of thin wall stuff. I didn't know if they would hold up in a six point. And uh, so I, I went ahead and got this impact socket. And this was, this did real well. I'm not going to kid you though. Um, I braced this, the head of this on a floor jack. And I'm an honest 180, 185. And I had to hang off this thing and bounce on it a couple times to get that bolt to break loose. Didn't take real long. Uh, once I put a little muscle into it, you know, a couple pop, pops and cracks and it, it broke loose. But you're going to have to have the right tools. Uh, this is three quarter inch. The half inch stuff, as people said on the internet, just has too much twist to it. And you can't get it broke loose. And I believe that now. Uh, here is that special Honda tool. I got this at CarQuest. Here in town, mainly because they could get it. They basically got it the next day. I called them on a Friday, and they had it on uh, Saturday morning, sitting at the counter waiting for me. 50 millimeter tool, um, crank 50 millimeter. Here's what's left of the packaging. Crank pulley holder, Honda. I don't remember who makes this tool, but it really doesn't matter. You just got to ask for it. It's a crank pulley holder. And this is also a necessity, unless you have giant air tools to break that bolt loose. But then when it comes to retorquing it, you're really going to need this anyway for tightening it back up. So I recommend getting one of these. Okay, and now we're on to the tensioner. I'm about to talk about this thing on the interweb. Now, uh, somebody I didn't know how this thing worked, and somebody mentioned that they start leaking. And in fact, the one I removed has obviously been leaking. It's got... Try and hold this still here. It does have fluid resting on top of that, and this portion is up at kind of an angle. So you can see it's been leaking. I don't know if that's a real big deal, but either way, if you're going to do a timing belt, you need to replace this part. This is a Honda part. Okay, now it gets into these here two parts. This is the tensioner pulley. And the idler pulley, I found this image off the web, by, by the way, these two parts. Now, I bought my parts at the Honda, Honda uh, parts counter here at the Honda dealer, and that is expensive. I realize that, but uh, I was, you know, like I say, the car's been trouble free. I wanted to put all um, original parts back on it if I could. Now, the Honda parts counter guy and their service center said, They'd never ordered these in. They couldn't re recall ordering these in or replacing them, which I kind of find hard to believe because these are real common parts. So I don't know. If they tell you you don't need these two pulleys, they're wrong. You need to replace those two parts. Now, what I found here is they're both a Koyo. That's how I'm pronouncing it. Uh, bearing here. And this little holder. And I, I found that this, the tensioner pulley, I can't really spin it, but with you hearing it, but it is it is audibly rough, and it'll it'll do that where it vibrates and comes to a dead stop. So this absolutely has to be replaced, as well that this uh, does this part. 
If you're doing a 100,000 mile or a 60,000 mile, I'd always just count on putting these in. So what happened is I got these wore out parts at Sunday afternoon. Where am I gonna get these at? So I called up the local parts store and sure enough, they had replacements. And they are also Coil brand, brand new parts here. So I got this, the new tensioner pulley. It's the regular assembly. Got this bearing here. And got some part numbers. I don't know which is which, but this is the Gates part number here. And uh, the bigger box, I imagine this is the tensioner pulley. This is the other Gates number. And these two parts were a hundred bucks. Um, now I've heard people buying kits with these things, but uh, I didn't do that. Okay, so, oh, spark plugs. Um, these spark plugs, I bought them at Honda, and they were incredibly expensive. I'm embarrassed to say how much I paid for them. Now, the, the spark plug gaps were perfectly fine, I found, which was really interesting, but part of the insulator that houses the center probe on one of the spark plugs had broke off. So I'm really glad I replaced these as well. Okay, so I think that covers that. Now I want to go into one other topic, just another uh, minute or less here. So we'll go over and look at something else. Um, this is all the plastic covering business that goes on that. And uh, I don't want to say I was scared of it, but where all the bolts are and, and whatnot, so just a little bit of a mystery, especially when you can't see them. So you have this piece cover here, which is kind of trapped. And this one that's kind of trapped on this lip here. And this piece has uh, five bolts in it. Yep. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and I gotta find that one. I dropped that one. Uh, this piece has also five bolts in it. One, two, three, four, five. These handy little windows, you gotta get it to number one TDC before you start taking stuff apart, so I'm told. Um, this is the bottom cover. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts that I see here. Now this thing has kind of a lip seal on the back of it just to keep the big chunks of dirt out. And the only problem I had there is uh, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Anyway, that lip seal, I had all those bolts out and that thing didn't want to come off. And it looks like they maybe put a little bit of RTV in each corner just to hold that in place. And um, basically I had to pop it loose and then try and make sure the seal stays stuck to the cover. Uh, that's all, all I got to say about this. Um, project is going just fine. And I'll probably be, unless I have some sort of major issue, I'll probably be done in a couple hours actually putting this all back together. It really doesn't take much. Here's the that dreaded washer everybody talks about. Just got to make sure that this is out so it doesn't grab your belt. Uh, the condition of the belt I removed was okay. It didn't show any signs of any extra wear or tear, but I think it is stretched a little bit. These bolts, in case you're wondering how they work, this is the bearing bolts or the tensioner pulley bolts, idler pulley bolts. They actually have kind of this cone on there so you can leave them loose. It gives you some slack and then as you tighten them up, it uh, centers that, that idler. And this one is actually the same way. So that's all I got.